In the next two lectures, we're going to begin our discussion on a type of sexual reproduction process that takes place in eukaryotic cells known as meiosis. Now, when we discussed mitosis, we said that mitosis is a cell division process that somatic cells undergo. So, somatic cells are the eukaryotic cells that divide via mitosis. Now, those eukaryotic cells that divide via meiosis are known as gametocytes. So, gametocytes divide via meiosis and somatic cells divide via mitosis. Now, both of these processes are a type of cell division. The question is, what exactly is the major difference between mitosis and meiosis? So, in mitosis, our somatic cell divides into two genetically identical cells that are diploid, and that means the chromosome number does not actually change. If we begin with 46 chromosomes, we're going to end up with cells that contain 46 chromosomes. However, in the process of meiosis, our gametocyte divides into four genetically different haploid cells. And that means if we begin with 46 chromosomes, the chromosome number will be divided by two. So we're going to end up with cells with haploid cells that contain only 23 chromosomes. Now, in humans, our male gametocyte is known as a spermatocyte, while our female gametocyte is known as the oocyte. Now, before meiosis actually takes place and before the cell divides via meiosis, the cell undergoes a process known as interphase, which is similar to the interphase that takes place in somatic cells before they divide via mitosis. Now, during interphase, we have a phase known as the S phase. And during the S phase of interphase, we have the DNA that is replicated. And in humans, where we have 46 chromosomes, all 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes are basically replicated during the process of S phase in interphase. So, our DNA is actually replicated before meiosis actually takes place, in the same way that the DNA is replicated before mitosis takes place. Now, what exactly do we mean by this replication process? Let's take a look at the following diagram. So, let's take one of these 23 pairs as shown in the following diagram. So, this is our pair of homologous chromosome. So, we have homologous chromosome 1 and homologous chromosome 2. Now, these two chromosomes are genetically different from one another. One of these chromosomes, let's say the purple one, came from the male, and the other one, let's say the brown one, came from the female parent. So these are genetically different, but they are homologous. And what that means is both of these chromosomes carry genes that code for the same exact trait. So what that means is, let's suppose that the purple chromosome contains the gene that codes for the hair color. That means the brown one will also contain the gene that codes for the hair color. That's exactly why these are homologous. So during S phase of interphase, before meiosis actually takes place, we replicate each one of these individual chromosomes. So we replicate the purple one and we produce this and we replicate the brown one and we produce this. Now this is identical with respect to this and that's exactly why we call them sister chromatids. So these two sister chromatids are identical with respect to one another. 
Now, on this chromosome, we also have two identical sister chromatids, and these two chromosomes, just like these two individual chromosomes, are said to be homologous with respect to one another. So we basically double the number of chromatids, but the number of pairs remains the same. We have one pair and one pair here, but we have four chromatids here and only two chromatids here. So that means during S phase, we double the number of chromatids. So now once our gametocytes actually undergo the process of S phase, those gametocytes are known as primary gametocytes. So our male gametocytes are known as primary spermatocytes, while our fe uh, female gametocytes are known as primary oocytes. Now, before the female organism, before the female human is actually born, all the oocytes basically become primary gametocytes or primary oocytes. And, we t and we'll talk more about that when we'll discuss the process of sexual reproduction. Now, let's actually get into the process of meiosis. Now, as we said, meiosis is the process by which a single cell, a single gametocyte, divides into four genetically different haploid cells. Now, we can divide the process of meiosis into two stages. We have meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. In this lecture, we're going to focus only on meiosis 1. In the next lecture, we're going to discuss the process of meiosis 2. Now, just like mitosis can be divided into four stages, meiosis one can be divided into four individual stages. We have prophase one, metaphase one, we have anaphase one, and telophase one. So let's take a look at each one of these individual phases and describe what takes place in each one of the phases. And let's begin with prophase one of meiosis. Now, prophase 1 of meiosis is somewhat similar to prophase of mitosis in that in prophase 1 of meiosis, we have the two centrioles that begin to move to opposite ends. And as they begin to move to opposite ends, they begin to synthesize our mitotic spindle apparatus. And they begin to synthesize the spindle fibers, which begin to grow and move into the nucleus of our cell. Now, at the same exact time, the chromatin condenses into the chromosomes and the nuclear membrane, as well as our nucleolus, begins to disappear. And that's exactly what allows our spindle fibers to make its way into the nucleus area of our cell. Now, the major difference between prophase 1 of meiosis and prophase of mitosis is the following. So, the major process that takes place within, uh, within prophase 1 is a type of genetic recombination process known as crossing over. And we'll see what crossing over is in just a moment. Now, before crossing over actually takes place, our two homologous pairs of chromosomes actually have to find one another and basically orient themselves side by side. And then that allows crossing over to actually take place. So before crossing over takes place, homologous pairs must find each other and move side by side with respect to each other. And this pairing, this movement of the homologous chromosomes next to one another is known as synapsis and this is shown in the following diagram. So the first step of synapsis is the following. These two homologous pairs of chromosomes that we spoke of earlier actually have to find each other and move side by side and then when they move side by side these chromatids of these two chromatid, uh, chromosomes have to overlap. They have to intertwine as shown in the following diagram. So during the process of synapses, the point at which our two chromatids intertwine or overlap is known as our chiasma. 
And in this diagram, the chiasma is basically this point here. It's the point at which our two chromatids, this chromatid and this, two, uh, and this chromatid, basically overlap. Now, because we have four individual chromatids, we have one chromatid two, three chromatid four, this entire structure is known as a tetrad. So basically the tetrad refers to the orientation of these individual four chromatids that are very close with respect to one another. Now, once synapsis actually takes place and we form our chiasma, then crossing over actually takes place. So crossing over is a type of genetic recombination process in which we have the exchange of genetic information from this chromatid and this chromatid. So basically crossing over produces two new recombinant chromosomes as shown in the following diagram. So this section ends up on this chromatid and this section ends up on or this section ends up on this chromatid to form the following two recombinant chromosomes. So crossing over produces our two recombinant chromosomes and notice that each one of the chromatids on the chromosomes are genetically different from one another. So this chromosome or this chromatid is different this chro uh, than this chromatid and this chromatid is different than this one and it's different than this one. So each one of these chromatids have their own unique genetic information and that's exactly what our recombinant uh, genetic recombination actually does. So this is the major process that takes place in prophase 1 that differentiates prophase 1 from, pro, uh, from prophase of mitosis. Now let's move on to metaphase 1 of meiosis. So during metaphase 1, the spindle fibers actually attach themselves to the kinetochore region of each one of these tetrads. And what these spindle fibers basically do is they align the tetrads along the center, along the equatorial line of our cell as shown in the following diagram. So let's suppose our cell contained only six pairs of homologous chromosomes. So that means we're going to have three tetrads as shown in the following diagram that are aligned along the center. Notice that met uh, metaphase one is not exactly the same as metaphase of mitosis. In metaphase of mitosis, we actually align these individual chromosomes along our equator. So in metaphase of mitosis, we would have six of these aligned along our equator. But in metaphase one of meiosis, we only have three because we form these tetrads and these tetrads are basically aligned along our equator. So we have 23 tetrads that are basically aligned along the equator and together we have 23 times 2 or 46 chromosomes. Now let's move on to anaphase 1 of meiosis. In anaphase we have the process of disjunction and disjunction basically means our spindle fibers begin to pull on our chromosomes and we separate our chromosomes. So these three chromosomes begin to go onto the left side and these other three begin to move to the right side. So we separate our tetrads. So during anaphase one, this junction occurs. That is, the chromosome pair in the tetrad are separated to opposite poles. Now notice one important point. So let's take a look at this tetrad here. So this chromatid and this chromatid are basically the same chromatid that we began with in, in uh, this uh, diagram before the S phase actually took place. So these are the two original homologous chromosomes where one came from the mother and one came from the father. And notice what happens in the process of anaphase. So our chromosome that came from the father is separated from 
the chromosome that came from the mother. And this means that our genes that are homologous, that code, for the same type of traits are separated during the process of anaphase and this is known as the law of segregation. So notice that the original maternal and paternal homologous pair are separated. So this is separated from this, this is separated from this, and this green one is separated from this orange one. This process is absolutely random and that basically means this can end up on this side or it can end up on this side. Now this process is random so either one can end up on either side and this process of segregating our alleles, our genes that code for similar traits that came from the female and the male parent, this segregation process is known as the law of segregation and we'll talk more about the law of segregation when we'll get into genetics. Now, let's move on to the process known as telophase 1. So following anaphase 1 of meiosis, we have telophase 1 of meiosis. So during telophase 1, the nuclear membrane begins to reform around each set of chromosomes. So we form two nuclei on the left side of the cell and the right side of the cell. At the same time, the nucleolus basically reforms, our spindles begin to basically deteriorate, and what also happens is our nuclear membrane begins to basically separate into two and the cytoplasm also begins to divide. So cytokinesis begins to take place. Now, once the cell actually divides, one of the cells will have this information and the other cell will have this information. And notice, our initial cell had one, two, three, four, five, six chromosomes. And after this division, each cell will have one, two, three chromosomes and one, two, three chromosomes. So during telophase one, we have our nuclear division that basically transforms our diploid cell into a haploid cell. So in humans, we begin with 46 chromosomes and when telophase one takes place, we're going to end up with a haploid number of chromosomes. And that's exactly why telophase one of meiosis is also known as the reduction division because it reduces the chromosome number from 46 to 23 chromosomes. So this is the process known as meiosis 1. Next is meiosis 2 and we're going to focus on meiosis 2 in the next lecture.